It was the start of a beautiful morning in Casey, Illinois. It was cold, but the sun was shining as we left Richard's Farm Restaurant and uh, headed back to I-70 West. We are making our way to Conway, Missouri Welcome Center for our evening stop. Today's trip was just supposed to be over four hours. We were looking forward to an early stop because the next two days were going to be long hauls to our evening stops. Just into our first hour on the road, I received an engine warning on the dash. First time I'd ever seen something like that. Basically said, reduced engine speed was the readout. So I immediately checked my oil gauge to see if there was something going on there. And then I looked to the bottom right and checked the water gauge, and there it was. The heat sensor for the water temperature shot through the roof in seconds. I pulled over to the side of the highway expecting to see steam gushing from the hood as I slowed down, but there was nothing. When I climbed out of the RV though, I noticed on the black grab handle you used to get down, it was wet. It was antifreeze. And just all down the side of the RV, from the front passenger wheel right to the uh, door, was covered in antifreeze. So I opened up the hood to take a look at the uh, heat reservoir and um, it was low. We started looking around to see if we could figure out just where this antifreeze was coming from. John, who was actually traveling with us in his RV, noticed a small hole in the tube where the hose actually sat and was supported by a rubber holder. We could see that the movement of the hose on the holder over the years had worn down the rubber siding and created just a small little pin sized hole. It looked like a slow leak, so I had to do two things. First, I ended up grabbing some electrical tape and got underneath the RV and wrapped the actual hole up with electrical tape. Then I found a container that had vinegar in it, poured it out, and used the water from our clean water tank to fill it up and transfer it back into the reservoir for the radiator. I was basically just hoping that we'd be able to get ourselves to the nearest location, which happened to be Effingham. I knew that there was a Walmart there where we could actually park and I could take a more serious look at what was going on. But I have to tell you, being underneath the RV as the trucks were rushing by and the pressure of the air pushing against our RV was just a little unnerving. So luckily enough, we didn't have any problems from our location um, on the side of the highway into Effingham. We got into the Effingham uh, Walmart parking, parking lot and I went inside and I purchased gasket glue and a rubber bicycle inner tube. And I just basically MacGyvered up a quick fix using the bicycle inner tube with the gasket glue over the small hole and of course electrical tape to hold it all together. We just wanted to make it to Conway Welcome Center and hopefully find something, or I should say hopefully find someone along the way that could help or change the tube for us. The Walmart garage, of course, was no use to us. They didn't have what we needed. While the quick fix was done, I ran the engine for 20 minutes. It wasn't heating up, so we decided to make our move and hit the highway and get ourselves down to Conway. We still had about 280 miles to go. Well, there is one bright spot as we journeyed out of Effingham. I was really looking forward to going through St. Louis. And as we made our way into the beautiful city of St. Louis, we passed by the Gateway Arch that has welcomed visitors for 50 years. I've always seen the arch during the beginnings of any of the Toronto and St. Louis Blues games, but to actually see it in real life, it was truly awe-inspiring. Now what's interesting is the Gateway Arch is a 630-foot tall monument clad in stainless steel and built in the form of a weighted cantonary arch. It is the world's tallest arch and Missouri's tallest accessible building. That's something I didn't realize is that there's actually, it's actually a building. You can go inside of the arch. I had no idea that you could actually do that. Some sources consider it the tallest human man-made monument in the Western Hemisphere. 
Now what's really interesting is the Gateway Arch and Park actually commemorates two people. Thomas Jefferson's vision and his role he played in opening the West up to the pioneers and to Dred Scott, who sued for his freedom in the old courthouse. Who is Dred Scott? Well, it piqued my curiosity and I had to look it up. And evidently, Dred Scott was an enslaved African-American man who was owned by John Emerson of Missouri. In 1833, Emerson undertook a series of moves as a part of his service in the U.S. military, and he took Scott from Missouri, a slave state, to Illinois, a free state, and finally into Wisconsin Territory, a free territory. During this period, Dred Scott met and married Harriet Robinson, who became part of the Emerson household. Now, John Emerson married in 1838, and in the early 1840s, he and his wife returned with Dred and Harriet Scott to Missouri, where John Emerson died three years after in 1843. Dred Scott reportedly attempted to purchase his freedom from John Emerson's widow, who refused the sale. In 1846, with the help of anti-slave lawyers, Dred Scott and his wife Harriet, along with their two daughters, filed individual lawsuits for their freedom in a Missouri state court in St. Louis on the grounds that their residence in a free state and a free territory had freed them from the bonds of slavery. There's a link below if you'd like to know how it all turned out for the Scots. So as we left St. Louis, we had to get back to the task at hand and that was trying to locate a shop or a garage that could change out our rad hose. I had to stop for gas and we stopped for gas in Lebanon and I noticed that we still had water down the side of the RV. This time I took a little bit of a closer look now that we weren't sitting at the side of the highway and what I found out did not really make me too happy. Upon further inspection I could see now where the water was coming from. It was leaking from our heater core. There's a small overflow valve at the bottom of the casing and the water was basically dripping or spewing out of that hole and I guess the wind movement of us moving forward was taking that fluid and sending it all down the side of the RV from the wheel well to the door. Well, okay, great. I found the problem, but now how do I get it fixed? We were only 25 miles away from the Welcome Center and I knew if I filled the reservoir up with water again we could make it there. Karen had already started making calls to the nearest city which was Springfield, trying to locate a shop to fix our first problem which was the hose, and now the second problem, the heater core. It was the worst game from St. Louis to Springfield of trying to call and receiving information back like well, try calling this guy, or we don't work on RVs, or we do work on RVs, but we're busy and we can't fit you in till next week. It was a little, uh, well, it was a little concerning, that's for sure. We pulled into Conway for the night, and I'm thinking there's no way we can travel any further with this. And it may mean sending John and Deb, who are traveling with us to Arizona, basically having them continue on without us. As the night ended, Karen and I got some good news from a truck company located in Springfield. Jason, a representative of Crump, he informed us at that time that they normally don't work on RVs, but if it's a simple fix, they might be able to help us to get us back on the road. So with that glimmer of hope, we headed out for the shop at 8 a.m. the next morning. When we arrived, I showed the mechanic what was going on and he confirmed that we blew the heater core. So at that point, he gave us two choices. We could wait for the parts to arrive, which would have been three to five business days, or he could do a simple bypass, which would unfortunately leave no heat for us while we were driving. Karen and I decided to take the bypass. We only had two more nights of cool weather, and when we stopped, we knew we could turn on the furnace to warm us back up. And that would also give us the opportunity to continue traveling with John and Deb. 
So by 11.30 a.m., we are back on the road and off to our next Harvest Host overnight stop. But the next 24 hours, on the way to the Air Force Base, would change everything. Well, that was quite the day. Most definitely. Yeah. Two challenges, or one big challenge, actually. And yeah. Being at the side of the highway in with the RV is definitely not something that I no, enjoy. It was a little unnerving. I mean, it there was, was scary. Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of trucks that moved over into the other lane. But there was times where they couldn't because they were side by side. So exactly. The amount that it moved to the RV was... was um, it was a oh, lot. Oh, it was. It was yeah. crazy. Yeah, it was a little unnerving being underneath it and trying to put the tape on the hose so we can get ourselves to heaven again. That was, yeah, that was a little scary, for yeah, sure. Most definitely. But um, I think we need to definitely do a shout out to uh, the guys at uh, Crump Truck and Trailer Works in uh, Springfield, Missouri. Yeah, most uh, definitely. Guys, I mean... Without you guys, we wouldn't have been able to get ourselves to where we are right now. Uh, special thanks to Jason and Parts. Oh, he was amazing. When I called, because as we were driving, we knew we needed to find somewhere because we were constantly filling up the reservoir with water. Exactly. So it wouldn't overheat. Yeah. So we were kind of under a crunch to find someone that would take a look at it you know, help us and get it fixed or yeah. get us back on the road safely. I mean, when we originally started, it was just the hose that we thought was the problem, but then once we got into Effingham, we realized that it's there not, was a little bit more than that. Yeah, it's not just the hose. So, yeah. and we weren't quite sure, but we, I had called probably, it had to have been between eight and 10 uh, places. Yeah. Some of them RV places, some of them other truck stops. Yeah. Uh, the answers I was getting was, you know, sorry, we're so backlogged, we're like three oh, yeah. weeks out. Others were, you know, we do look at it, unfortunately, that we can't with yours because it's gas, we only deal with diesel. diesel. Yeah. And others was, sorry, we don't work on RVs. But when I called Jason at Crump, he actually was really honest, he was great. He said that they don't normally work on RVs, however, with it being under the hood and, you know, something to do with the heater core possibly um, they could take a look at it and if they weren't able to fix it then possibly the radiator place next, next to them door, yeah. would be able to help us but definitely bring it in and um, you know we'll, we'll see what we can do for you and that really that gave us peace of mind when we pulled into uh, Conway and we ended up uh, getting that little bit of information it actually kind of helped us oh. relax thinking okay you know what there might be there's an you end know, to it yeah yeah there's light at the end of the tunnel here for us so we popped up at 8 o'clock in the morning and got ourselves there as soon as we could yeah but it was what less it was only it was less than a half hour drive to get there so exactly. we knew we were okay with the amount of water that we put in the reservoir. You yeah, we in. knew we could make it. Yeah, so, but we just knew well, going, well, trying to go past there without having it fixed was something that the two of us knew we couldn't do. Yeah. Um, and I think that was our concern is we didn't really want to have to worry about sending John and Deb on their way without us. Um, but I mean, if we had to, we really didn't have, you know, there, no, didn't we didn't want to hold it back anymore. Exactly. But, uh, but once again, I mean, honestly, it was the guys from Crump that uh, really made it happen for us. Um, the hospitality, oh. um, the information that they provided, the service was outstanding. Was. So I think, you know, a big shout out to Jason and Parts. Um, Jason, the Jason, service the manager. The service manager, um, the general manager, Dusty, Dusty, who's a fellow musician. Um, yeah. And also to the man who put it all together for us, which was Dan. Yeah. Thank you very much, guys. We really appreciate what you did for us. Yeah, most definitely. Thanks, guys. Yeah, uh, that was great. You got us safely back on the road, so thank you. And peace of mind. All the best. And um, yeah, so we've got uh, one more day. Day four was a little bit of a, a hectic day as well. Really kind of changed things up. We had another bit of a hiccup. Yeah. Stay tuned to hear about that one. Yeah, most definitely. That yeah. uh, video should be out uh, sometime next week. Yep. So stay yep. tuned and yeah, you know, we'll share our next little hiccup with you. Yep, <laughs> so all the best from uh, TOL RV Adventures and uh, we'll see you guys soon. Yeah, take care. Thanks. Bye. Bye.